What's going on guys? Victor here from beautiful Panama City, Florida. Check out the size of this giant mangrove snapper, my biggest ever, and this massive red grouper right over there. Brooke and I are here with her family in Panama City, took a really good trip with our good friend Josh from Heritage Excursions. He's a charter captain. Here, I'm gonna have all of his information linked below. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Action packed, see you out on the water. So yesterday we fished with Josh from Heritage Excursions and we're out here again and it is absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at this. It does not get calmer than this. We're about 18 miles out. We're gonna go catch a bunch of fish, bring them to an island, do a big old cookout, just have fun in the sun. We got Brooke's family once again, everyone's here. First doing. mate Vic coming up. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a little combination of baits. Debbie's gonna get beautiful Boston mackerel. And then this right here, little cigar minnow. Josh likes to hook them like this. Once through the tail, come back around and go in there. Really kind of bury it in there. You got a big fish? <laughs> big, I didn't have a fish this big yesterday. Wow. Oh, hell yeah, bro. Gotta gain some on him before he gets you in the red. Alright, you got him coming now. Nice! Good job, Brian. Proud of you. <laughs> you wound on the first bite. <laughs> that wasn't a nibble. I got something good here, bro. I'm thinking a grouper. Either that or a big red. Uh oh. Uh oh. Gotta get him up. Oh, it's a shark. Uh-uh. Damn. No, no, he's oh, there. There's, there's a shark, a shark. Down, there. There's a shark down there. There's a shark down there. It's a in. big red grouper. Come on. Oh, he got no tail. Aww. Dang, I seen oh, that shark. Oh my gosh, that would have been ginormous. I seen that shark. Wow, you only what? got half your Are lunch. You That's the biggest red grouper I've ever seen. Oh my what do you think about that, well, Josh? Yeah. I think there's a shark problem. And they're been. eating them like this. What you, there's what too many. Would have been. You can still keep. We can still eat this, right? Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. Oh. We have been battling sharks the last two days. You guys always hear us talk about sharks on the East Coast. I understand that sharks are a part of the natural ecosystem, but you're gonna start to see a lot more fishermen complain. The sharks are at record numbers. And no, no one's doing anything about it. They're just eating everyone's fish. You hear every charter captain on the West Coast, East Coast complaining about them. And here's the proof. We got most of the meat, but still, ruin the tail end. I knew that was a good fish the minute I hooked it. It was bigger than anything I caught yesterday. I'm glad I got it up. Leave it. I to see it. Fish, fishing. Thank you. Rally basket. Beast. That's the biggest snapper I've caught. That's the biggest one you caught? Oh, I would say so. That's a big one. Nice job. You got a good one, Vic? Yeah, Fisher just pulled up a stud. Biggest one of the day so far. I don't think mine will be that big. But it could be a keeper. Yeah, he's doing Tr circles down Trigger there. fish feel like Josh best described the last time we were up here with them. Sewer cap. You're pulling up a super sewer cap doing circles like this. <laughs> so check this yeah. out. You guys have seen us do this a million times. There's a reason these fish are called trigger fish. This thing right here, he uses it to basically defend himself from predators. If a shark or something tries to eat him, he sticks this thing up, it lodges in their throat, and they basically can't digest it. But there's a little mechanism right here. You can't push this down with your finger, but if you go right here, it folds down just like that. That's nature at work right there. This guy have been bit by them before does not feel good. They will take your finger off. Look at those human-like teeth in there. And unfortunately, the season's closed because these are delicious fish. Josh says I got a trigger on, I don't think so. I hope you know. No, it is. You know it's a trigger fish when they fight all the way up. It's not a trigger fish. No? Oh my gosh. What is it? It's a giant oh Get it, get it, get it, get like, it! No, he's good. barely hooked. Gaff him, Josh. He's barely hooked. Is that a Big. mangrove? Yeah, it's a mangrove. Holy, Holy crap! Smokes. There you go. Wow. Heck Holy. yeah, look at that thing. That's look at that thing. thing. That is my biggest mangrove snapper ever. Josh, get in here with me. You guys want fish? This guy is the man. Look at that mangrove. 
Brian just caught his biggest ever red grouper. Stud mangrove snapper. That's a, my first double digit mangrove ever. Oh yeah. It's a nice fish. Another mangrove. Another nice one. Well, he was barely hooked too. Nice one, Jed. Good yeah, job, Jed. Mangrove brothers. Orange, get it back, Look at get that. back down. Stud mangrove snapper. That thing will go over 10 pounds all day. This is one fish you do not want to stick your finger in its mouth. They got incredible jaw pressure. I'm very confident with fishing one of these baits. Look at that thing. Little Boston mackerel. I mean, you don't, you don't reel on a vibration. Look at this. See that? This is why I like that bait. That All that vibration. You guys see that in the tip? All those fish down there, whatever's around is gonna see that and feel that. So you don't have to go out 50, 60 miles to get these quality fish. I mean, look at this. Big mangrove snapper. Big red grouper. Look at that thing. Giant. It's the biggest red grouper on our trip. She got a shark? She got a shark. Oh, oh just two is two sharks down there. Oh look my the gosh. No. That was a nice snapper, Dev. Good job all the way. You got perfect <laughs> bite marks though. You got your camera on? Yeah. Watch this, watch this. He's gonna eat it. Oh my gosh. He wants to go for a swim, seriously. Are those aren't cobias down no. there, are they? No, those are baits. Uh, that was a big, big <laughs> red snapper, Deb. That was a good fight. <laughs> I bet. What did it feel like when that shark grabbed a hold of him? Oh, sad. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do when you get shark? I gotta move. We gotta haul back the gear and we gotta move. We can't sit there and feed these fish to them. I'm, I'm not gonna just sit here and provide free meals for all the sharks. So Debbie just lost a really nice snapper. And if you keep fishing that same spot, you lose three more fish, those sharks are really gonna know what a fisherman is and what a boat is. And they're really gonna get accustomed to it. So it's honestly better to pull up and go, even if it's a really good spot. You don't wanna train those sharks, you don't wanna feed them. Yeah. One's got something good. Uh -oh. Giants. Uh -oh. Giants. Easy way to I'm trying. You are due for this fish, Lauren. Yeah, really. <laughs> mm. Your luck's about to change. I hope so. This morning's been rough so far. You got a grouper. Really? Yep. Oh. She's got a... Um, a gag grouper, Josh. Stop, stop. I don't know if it's Lee. <clears throat> We're going to measure him, though. That's a hard fighting fish right there. Yeah. You ever caught one of those, Vic? With you. I know a guy. <laughs> it's legal. He's a keeper. Nice job, Lauren. First keeper gag. Fish off. Slide off and see if he'll swim out. That was our first keeper gag of the trip. It's funny, last time we fished with Josh, it was mainly gags and very few red grouper. This trip, it's been all, I mean, all trophy, once in a lifetime red grouper, and that was the first keeper gag. And a lot of big red snapper. Get yeah, so pick up, pick up. There you go. Yeah, another gag. Oh, that fish is immobile. Mm. Catch that fish. Oh. Big. Oh, God. It's Get gotta some. be. Mm. Oh, come on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh-huh. You don't want to know about Vic's little secret. Ooh. First beeliner of the day. Look at this little secret. Yeah, that clip first, you get your jig, and then you tie a little squid lure on there, so that thing just flutters. We'll get you a new hook it's a little soon. finesse. Sometimes fish want to eat something right really sometimes. small, so I got to just lick a little octopus lure on there. Keeper beeliner. Look again. They love that little octopus. Did you even hit I, no, bottom? I, yeah, I hit bottom and never even jigged. I think it's just that motion of that little squid skirt is going down there. Josh, I think I found you a new technique to use for yeah. these things. Save money on bait. Look at that, same thing. Never ate the jig, 
stay that little octopus. You gotta think in the wild, there's a bunch of little octopus down there, little squids. Nice one, Dad. Good fish. Last snapper of the day. That's our limit. We're here at Shell Island Sandbar. So one thing that Josh does is not only does he slay and he'll take you guys offshore, and like yesterday we filled up the boat. We pretty much filled up the boat today too, but he does offer a really cool trip where you guys can bring your catch to this little sandbar, go snorkeling, go diving, go pick up shells, and the best part is you get to enjoy the freshest fish you'll ever have. I'm cooking it up today, but Josh can cook it up for you guys if you book a trip with him. Ain't that right? I'm not gonna lie, Vic's a better cook, but I can grill a fish pretty good. And last year, Brookie made ceviche and I made fish tacos on the grill. This year, we're doing the opposite. I'm making the ceviche and she's making the tacos. So the first thing we're doing is getting our fish prepped. That way we could get it marinating in our lime juice. I mean, look at that. It does not get fresher and just gorgeous red snapper. Right over that rib cage. Other side of the backbone. Just like that. I mean, I think it's a really cool thing to do with your family. You know, not everybody wants to go out there 12 hours and fish all day. You know, you get your wife, your kids, you come out here, everyone has a good time. It's a little bit less intense but just as much fun, and I was very surprised. We didn't go out that far, but we caught plenty of quality. I mean, big fish. Deb got that giant red grouper. Some of the biggest red snapper we caught were today. There's our red snapper all filleted out. Dexter knives, best knives on earth, made in USA, and you guys can save 20% off. Use my code Landshark, link below. Definitely don't want the skin off. Look at that. That is a pretty pattern on a fish. I'm gonna cut out this bloodline, just because when you're eating raw fish, you really don't want it in there. So this is what I mean, you don't want any of this. It is fresh fish, but if you can avoid this, I would avoid it, and we got plenty today. Now for this, for ceviche, it all depends on what sizes you want. I'm gonna go with about yay big for our ceviche. You know, that way you get some texture in there but it's still bite-sized. This is what your snapper looks like. Look at that, just glistening. In these limes, there is something called citric acid. Citric acid breaks down the protein, the muscle of the fish, and it turns it that white color that's synonymous with cooked fish. So we take our juicy limes, and it's important when you make ceviche, you don't wanna cut up all your fruits and vegetables you're gonna put in there first, you wanna start with the fish, get that soaking in pure lime juice. And the cool thing about ceviche is it'll let you know when it's done. You guys will be able to tell when it turns completely white, which you guys will see in about 30 minutes, it's done. This is gonna be a very citrus forward ceviche. We got some chopped up blood orange, some mandarin, beautiful Roma tomatoes, and then the grapefruit. The grapefruit's gonna give it a nice tanginess and another level of acidity aside from the lime juice. And you guys see, this is what the fish looks like when it's cooked, essentially. You guys saw it went from being that real raw color to just completely white. Now, we toss, we put this in here, and I also have one bunch of cilantro chop. We're also gonna give it a little bit of heat. We just got some crystal. Crystal's not a very hot, hot sauce. So, we're just gonna go in here. So you guys are gonna get that heat from the crystal, all that tanginess from all that citrus and the grapefruit and the lime juice. And it's just gonna be a super refreshing thing to eat. Great as an appetizer or a fisherman's dessert, as you could call it. All right, so Brookie just made some delicious fish tacos. Nothing like eating some nice, hot, fresh fish that came from about 20 miles that way just a few hours ago. And then now we got our ceviche all made up. Just super vibrant and fresh. I'm excited, and I'm excited for everyone to try it. Something different tonight. 
I mean, I don't think there's anything more refreshing than ceviche. Like I told you, it's a fisherman's dessert. I mean, it's just healthy. It's just good for you. Look at it. Vegetables and fruits, fresh fish. There's nothing better than it. I like it a lot. I forgot the cucumber and onion at home to give it some texture, but I'm happy with it. Yeah. Oh man, it looks good. Sorry. Oh man, it's tick. Triple C's. It's amazing. That's really good. Mm. Oh man. Lord said, ooh man, let me get some more of that. I'm gonna stand right here. Refreshing? Last year I held the bowl. Mm. It's a little bit different. It's a different style I went with this time. And it's different good. fish. I love refreshing. I was like, that was so refreshing. Yeah, it's very refreshing. It I, is I definitely that. different than the recipe we're used to. It really used clears to, out your palate. But it's so good, so nice switch it up. So good. You like it, Brookie? Victor said something about dessert for fishermen. I mean, we just ate a bunch of tacos and everyone was like, we're really full. And then you take a bite of that and you're like, maybe I'm not so full. Like the sweetness of like the fruit and stuff in there really makes it almost like a dessert. Like it's just so delicious. It's healthy for you. You just can't beat ceviche. How's that for delivery? Delivery with a smile. Victor, we got some visitors. Oh yeah. Good? That's money in the bank right there. What's up, Calvin? What up, y'all got snacks? Yeah. <laughs> we just ate them all. We'll save some for you. Sweet, I'll be at the dog star. <laughs> so that's Calvin. That's actually Josh's partner. And not only do they do fishing charters, but they also yeah. do eco tourism tours and dolphin tours. Calvin's going to tell you guys a little bit about that at the dock now. Out here at Heritage, we uh, we opened up a little a little bit of an eco tourist boat, and uh, we're doing dolphin tours, dolphin tours, and island adventures. So we're doing everything from two and three hour dolphin tours. We go out, we swim around with some dolphins, and uh, then we go. We got a little estuary on Shell Island, crystal clear water. We go in there, we try and pick up some sand dollars and stuff, and have you guys a little keepsake take home. And I mean, on our island adventures, we go down to a private island and mess around down there and have blow up paddle boards and a grill and everything, and it's a uh, it's a big time, man. So if you guys want to have fun, I always bring the, the pink floral hat with me and we uh, we ball outrageous. So if you guys are trying to go have a good time, let me know. Captain Cal. <laughs> well, I'm going to fess up to my mistake because I think I'm, I'm hoping it's going to make me feel a little better. Josh is such a nice captain. When it happened, he, he didn't try to make me feel good. He tried to say that that happens. I had just caught that 20 plus pound red grouper and I cut up some bait. This is my excuse. My hands were slimy from cutting up a mackerel. I got a monster fish on, and what happened? I can't tell you what, but this thing shot out of my hand, and you know me, I love to dive. I would have dove in and chased it if it was there, but it just rocketed down, and uh, I lost one of these today. So, I'm gonna fess up to that mistake, and I'm gonna pay for it, and uh, hopefully, you know, my confession makes me feel better. <laughs> I mean, you just confessed to the whole world. I hope it does. <laughs> all right, guys, as you can see, I mean, we had so much fun, and this is what it's all about. You know, this is what Florida is all about. We got Brookie back there and Jed. Everybody's soaking up the sun. And once again, big thank you to Josh. None of it would be possible without him and Lauren, because you guys know behind every good man, there's a good woman, right? Good so, boss lady. Thank you, Josh. Yes, sir. Once again, I'll have all of his stuff linked below. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Without you, none of this would be possible. Catch you in the next one.